Okay, so today we're talking about how to train your mind like an NBA player. David Nurse just basically blew all of our minds. I've got seven pages of notes. I'm sure you guys have as many as well. So hopefully we didn't take the same notes, uh, even though if we did, it just reiterates the fact that how amazing this talk was. So uh, I'll go ahead and throw it over to Chad first. Chad, what did you get written down? Man, I only got six pages of notes, so I, I'm just not as detailed as you, I guess. So I, I probably I probably missed a couple things. Um, first of all, I loved your recommendation. I took you seriously when I when you said have note taking hands of fire. So I do, and and I need to like I think my right hand is so much stronger than my left hand because I write with my right hand. But anyway, I love I love how he's talking pivoting and and just the the small turns, um, because anybody can do that. You know, a lot of people go, it, it's hard for some people just to go all in if they've never experienced what going all in means, but everybody can make small little pivots. Um, I think when Ed says everything in life happens for you and not to you, that's just a great philosophy to adopt because then we know we can see the silver lining in anything if we know that it's happening for us and not to us. And so I think that's a great, great mindset piece. Uh, it can take 10 years to become an overnight success. We hear this all the time. I, I've got all uh, hours and hours and hours of Dave Ramsey. A lot of people have heard of Dave Ramsey and just all the stuff that he went through to get to where he finally got to. And I know we've all, Joel, you have a backstory and Tay has a backstory and I have a backstory and there's years and years and years of struggle and fighting to finally have some sort of success in different, different areas of life. And I think everybody goes through that. I'll leave the mirror strategy to you or Tay, because I know you guys are going to probably talk about that. And I love that. I love the other thing I would say about hands is I've always had this picture of having open hands instead of closed hands. And, and for me, when I see people try and have closed hands, I think of it as like trying to squeeze jello. Because when we try and hold on to things too tightly, we, we lose them. And I think of uh, money, you know, money comes from God through our hands. And if, I think if we have open hands, then we, we can be a conduit and we can be open to, to where they go. And, and just uh, this idea of open, open hands and reaching out, I think that's great. And everything he said with that was incredible. Um, the terminology piece, I remember years ago when someone said, hey, Chad, don't think of problems as a negative thing think of it change the word problems to challenges how does that feel and i was like whoa i like that word a lot more you know uh, struggle people go oh, i don't want to struggle but what if it's necessary for breakthrough what if you have to struggle what if the only way to successville is via the struggle bus now the struggle bus is just kind of something we need to get on the struggle bus to get to Successville, because that's the only avenue to get there. Uh, I love he said angry version, you know, it can make it lighter if you say poopy pants. <laughs> that's goofy, but it's fun. When I'm going around the house, I'm like, rah, rah, rah. my wife will say something like, hey, Eeyore. And I'm like, oh, you're funny. And it pulls me out of it, you know, because we all know Eeyore, right? Winnie the Pooh. He's got his friend Eeyore. that's just like, everything sucks. It's rain outside. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I should have just stayed in bed all day. It's like, come on, man, snap out of it. That's not serving us or anyone around us ever, if we ever get in that frame of mind. The highlight reel, visual, visualization. Remember one time when I heard that Olympi, Olympian, Olympic gold medalists don't ever just win the gold medal for the first time because they've done it hundreds of times in their mind first. And our mind doesn't know the difference between reality or just being visionary. This is why. Uh, I can't remember the name of the guy, but one guy was in, he was captured and he was literally Victor, Victor somebody, but he was literally captured in war and tortured. And he spent most of his time drifting away in his mind golfing. And he relived all these different times he'd been on these nine hole and 18 hole golf courses. And he would just continue to play and continue to play and continue to play in his mind to where when he got out of prison camp, he went and his golf game had improved via visualization only how is that possible if our mind can't actually change 
who we are based off of thinking and visualization. So when you see an Olympic athlete and you see them, uh, one of them was some type of, it was winter sports. And I remember this, this girl, it's the skiing thing. They're standing there with their eyes closed and they're visualizing going through their entire routine with zero mistakes perfectly. They're doing it over and over and over. So then it just becomes normal and routine for them to nail it when they actually do it. So that when you see them standing with their eyes closed, they're literally visualizing what they're getting ready to do. And then they just have to do it again because they've done it a thousand times already. You and I can do that too. We can visualize feeling great. We can visualize people joining our organization. We can visualize our children growing up and being very successful adults. Um, so that he said the highlight reel three times a day, the flocus, I just wrote down slow is smooth, smooth is fast. James Bond, be calm, cool, and collected while it simultaneously being the Terminator where you're aware, you're, you have awareness of what's happening around you and just the 10,000 hours, it's got to happen. If you want to be really good at something, you have to put in the time, you have to put in the work. Um, infuse people with confidence. I just, I just adapted that. Just, I just took that label on me. I want to be a person who's known for infusing people with confidence. I actually already put it on my, on my Facebook profile. I was like, Oh, that's so good. Star, star, star. <laughs> Boom. It's on there. It's out there. It's part of who I am now. Um, one thing I want to give to my, you know, credit to my parents is when I was growing up and I'm, this is why I'm got to be this way for my kids. When I was growing up, my parents, they, weren't, they, they missed it in a lot of areas, but the one area they nailed it was they always said, Chad, you can be anything and you can do anything. And that was the constant message. So I never had this doubt in that area. I've got plenty of doubts in, in other areas, you know, like look in the mirror and I'm like, Lord, why did you give me a radio face and not the GQ face? You know, come on, man, come on. But as far as accomplishing and being able to put in the, the work and the study, accomplish anything I can. And I think mostly because my parents always sowed those words into me because, you know, there's power of life and death in the tongue. So please, please, parents, please be very aware of what the seeds that you're planting in your children and just err on the side of positivity with your kids, please. Expectation is invitation. Expect, don't, don't say, oh man, like the world would say, oh, your kids are getting ready to be teenagers. Watch out. It's going to really suck. And then you're just like, oh, see, they told me you would be this turd when you turn 13. Right. Expectation is invitation. So let's expect the best possible. You know, let's let's go for the ideal. And if we have to deal with the real, we'll deal with the real. But if we set the bar high and we expect great things and it's more likely that our children will rise up to the expectation that we give them. And the last thing I'll say is when they're talking about writing out your dream life, you know, this is something I love. I've heard Pam Souter talk about this so many times. She's like, she sat down and said, I want my dream life. I want to sleep till I'm done sleeping. And then I want to get up and I always have some coffee. And then I want to, you know, have a couple phone calls with some friends and I want to do this. Oh yeah. And I want to make six figures. Let's see. She had established like her, her dream life. And so when she established her dream life, our, our subconscious mind, there's a great book called uh, what to, what to say to yourself when you talk to yourself or something like that. And it basically talks about how your subconscious mind like goes to work when you're not even thinking about it to make things happen that you are thinking about. So when you're thinking about, okay, I want to make six figures, but I got to have freedom. Like time freedom is so important. Financial freedom is so important. So let's think about the possibilities. Okay, well, we have to rule out the nine to five unless someone wants to pay you a hundred bucks an hour, right? Plus, which good luck finding that. And there's certain things you have to rule out. Traditional business, if you want to have uh, time freedom and, and travel, geographical freedom, it's very difficult to have a brick and mortar because then you have to go into the brick and mortar and you have to be, you have to be available at the brick and mortar. So you start to to say, like, well, this won't work for my, for what I'm looking for. This won't work for what I'm looking for. And then here we arrive network marketing. It solves a lot of these, these challenges that these other things would give us. So anyway, I'll stop right there. Cause, but my brain is engaged, Joel, I'm drinking my skinny brew. So I was already focused. I'm in focus mode right now and I'm just ready to go out and um, infuse people with confidence. So hopefully a couple people just got infused just now. I love that. I, I, 
quadruple starred that too. I was like, uh, infuse people with confidence. That is what you, myself, and Tay are looking to do. And that's why we do this. Um, I love my brain is aligning with you guys' brains. That's so right. I be, if I could be half the athlete that Tay's been, man, I'm winning. <laughs> if I can be half the confident mm. like, action taker that you are, Joel, then shoot, man. I might as well just die and go to heaven right now. That's why we're all here together. You guys complete me. Oh, uh, so good. Let's move the focus down to Tay. Tay, what'd you have written down? Yeah, that was uh, good for me. I love that he spoke about highlight reel because Aubrey was here with me and she was not having it. So I was trying to create these highlight reels of when she's the most peaceful, just just, just perfect baby so I can just concentrate and get all this done. So I was living in that moment while I was taking notes and I got a bunch of notes. Uh, I think the first thing that really stuck out to me, he said, uh, prepare for the opportunity. Uh, and I love that because I think I've been going through this uh, course with Dr. Darius Daniels. And he said, you have to prepare for what God is getting prepared for you. Uh, and I love that because many times we, we, we think we have a clear picture of what it is that we're supposed to do, but many times we don't. Uh, and for me, I understand like you have to position yourself for the opportunity. Like you don't know what is, when it's, you don't know when the door is gonna open, you don't know what's gonna be behind that door, but you have to be ready to walk through that door when it when it opens, like when it opens, like it's too late to get ready for it. So uh, just the preparation, I think part of that is just uh, dealing with struggle, dealing with things that you're going through, understanding, like you said, like life is not happening to you, it's happening for you. It's getting you ready, it's getting you stronger, it's letting you like literally recognize the strength from within that's already within you that if you didn't go through these things, you wouldn't realize that it was there. So uh, I love that. Uh, I love when he was talking about the mirror there. I won't go into detail, but the one thing that he said was doubt is a choice. Uh, and, and I love that so much because many times, like he said, like many of us uh, always like 90% of the time we think about worst case scenario and 90% of the time the worst case scenario never happens. Uh, so we choose to stress, we choose to worry, we choose to like really dwell on the things that's not going to come to pass. And I love that you can just have these triggers that like when you get into these moments where you do want to doubt, like you can do something to pull yourself out of that and think about the good things that you can do. Think about the positive steps that you can take, the lives that you really can uh, make an impact and change. So I love that. Uh, I love when he said uh, failure is the only way to learn and grow. Uh, and I personally, I love that because I think when you're failing, it means you're in the game. So like you're not on the, you're not in the stands telling people how things should be uh, being like what they call in sports was like uh, the sideline coach or the, the fan who's always know the perfect thing for the quarterback to do or the receiver to do that type of person. So understanding like when you're in the game, like you're going to fail. But at the same time, you understand like it, that play is going to get called again and you already know what you've done in the past so you can correct that mistake. You can build on it as well uh, so that you can't elevate yourself the next time you come around. And I also love when he said, use your, fail your failure to help others grow. Uh, and I love that because many times, many people won't see or have the same opportunities that you will, but you have a, a track story. You have a history with that so that you can go out and you can have credibility to go out and lift and elevate other people as well. Uh, I love when he said there's no short, shortcuts to success. Uh, and same thing with this business, like you can't wish this business to grow. Uh, you can't uh, hope that it'll grow. You can't expect anybody else to build it for you. You have to literally build it yourself. You have to do steps to success every single month. You have to put in the lawyers. You have to put it in the distributors. And everything outside of that is the extra. Everything outside of that is just the leadership. It just comes with uh, the role and the responsibility of it. So I just love that. He goes back to uh, the, what we would consider the old school saying of like putting in the 10,000 hours because most people, most people don't believe that. They think that viral means overnight success. Viral won't sustain you growing as a leader. Like once you go viral, you have to like, like he, I love that he talked about the Lynn Sanity story because I remember that moment and I had like, I thought he was the most confident person on earth at that moment because you go back and watch like everything he did, you can see the confidence. So for me looking back, like he wasn't confident in that time when he was like living at the height of like, it was like all lights was on him. And for me, like, it wasn't just US, like you have to think he's international. So like when they say all light, and I'm thinking like, he wasn't confident at that time. So for me, you have to understand, like you have to prepare yourself. You have to understand when opportunity comes, like you can't, uh, you have to embrace those moments. And you have to also have to understand, like you can't put, let other people put their expectations on you. 
you have to have your own expectations for yourself and live up to that and everything that you do for everybody else extra. Uh, and just the last thing he talked about, which I think is so crucial because it goes back to uh, just the beginning. And he said, figure out your why. What's your purpose? What's your drive? What's your passion? And then he said, and then come up with a, bl a blueprint. Think about your ideal dream life and get very super detailed about what it is. Get so specific that you can name everything down to the exact color, the exact size, like the exact location, whatever it may be, get super detailed about that. And then I kind of ended it with what Ed said. He said, let your actions line up with what your soul is calling you to do. Let your actions line up with what your blueprint, your dream life is calling you to do. So you have to have the action with the dream. Understand like the dream is free, but the hustles is sold separately. Like if you have this big dream, then you have to have this big hustle. You have to have these action steps that's going to allow you to move in that direction. So I love everything that he talked about. And I also love that he talked about his, his uncle. Last thing, he talked about his uncle because I personally, I was just like, he was just come out of nowhere. He was like, no, he's like 29. Like literally, I had no idea he coasted 29 years. Like literally, I had no idea about that. But when he goes back to like the preparation and the struggle, we had no idea who Nick Nurse was. But he has built up this resume of this credibility of just doing these jobs that nobody knew he was doing, but he was putting in the work. He had this picture on his fridge that he saw every single day that when he was going, like he said, coaching and then a halftime cooking popcorns. Guess what he was thinking about? That NBA championship that he didn't know what was going to come, but he positioned himself to win when the opportunity came. So we have to understand, we have to take that thing back to the same thing in this business. Like we talk about Black Diamond, we talk about hitting the highest rank in this, in this company, but we have to understand like we, we aren't going to get it the same way Joel and Stephanie got it. We aren't going to get it the same way Chad and Jerry got it. So we have to position ourselves. We have to show up for the cause. We have to do the Zooms, but most importantly, we have to do the steps of success month in and month out, year in and year out, understanding like it's that compound effect over time that's going to launch you into having this dream life that you've always wanted. So uh, I love this and I just love that he just have the action step that goes along with your dreams. A lot of people talk about the dreams, but they leave out the action. I think that's why a lot of people get quit or give up on things because they don't want to put in the work for what they ultimately want. So uh, I just love the fact that he gave us actionable steps that we can actually take and just really have these little triggers to remind us that the doubt is going to come, the fear is going to come. It's not going anywhere, but you have to overcome those things with actions and triggers and things that's going to allow you to change your mindset. So uh, I think this is super good. And I just thank you for sharing this, Joe. Taste speaking fire. Like you just want to be like, preach. So good. So uh, you guys, if you haven't noticed yet, uh, we keep expanding your library. So if you're not on like a monthly Audible subscription where you just get a bunch of points added to your account so that you can pick up these books as, as they come along, now you're missing the boat because I instantly went out as soon as I saw this and was like, pivot and go, that's next. Just went and grabbed it. So make sure that you're picking up these books because it's going to do more than just expand your knowledge. You're going to take these things and expand your life because you're going to put them into action. Cause that's, you know, a lot of what we've talked about is taking the things that you learn and then putting them into action. I like what he said about basic pivoting. So basic pivoting is the fact that you're getting surrounded by the enemy. You're getting surrounded by the defense and there really isn't much room for you to go. But if you do a 1% pivot, we're not talking about a 50% giant step out to get away from it. It's just a 1% pivot that gives you the opening and the opportunity to get out. So when you take that 1% progressively, it compounds. Most people are looking for that 50% jump to make a difference. And that's why most people fail because of the fact that those 50% jumps are so far and few between. But if you look at just doing that 1% difference and do it consistently, you'll prepare for that opportunity because, you know, he was talking about the 10 years to the overnight success. Well, those 10 years are built over those 1% differences. I mean, think about that. If you're doing 1% a day in your business to change, doing just that 1% thing, like he's, he's boiled it down to doing the three things. You know, if you could just focus on doing three things, 
and do them consistently, it will compound so that your life is unrecognizable at the end of the year. So what 1% steps are you taking? The other thing that he talked about is going into um, the self-confidence. The self-confidence thing, the fact that majority of people struggle with self-confidence. We're talking about, and Chad and Tay both pointed out, successful people, the people that you look up to struggle with self-confidence. And he actually broke it down. He goes, you have 50,000 self-talk thoughts per day. And of those, they've discovered that 80% or about 40,000 of them are negative. And that's the same for everybody. But what he was saying is that the, the elite, the, the one percenters, what they've been able to do is they've been able to stop those thoughts in the process and change it. So now 80% of their self-talk, they're programming to themselves. That's why talking to yourself and, and saying things out loud and, and having affirmations are so important is because without them, 40,000% of your self-talk thoughts to yourself are going to be negative. And if your thoughts are powerful and what you think is what you become, man, you should probably pay attention to the things that you're selling yourself. He said there's a huge disconnect between knowledge and action. That's, that's important. And I think that both Chad and Tay kind of hit on that is we, we get a bunch of people that come in and they have the knowledge of what they think they're going to do, but the disconnect is in the hustle. You know, they, they bought into the dream, but they decided that the hustle was too much and it, their dream wasn't worth that. So one of those things that you can do an amazing service to people for is to help them with their mindset on, on hustle because of the fact that that's what's going to get them to where they need to go. I said, you know, the foggy mirror effect. Most of us walk by a mirror and when we look at ourselves, it's all foggy. If you can just wipe that mirror clean for yourself every single day, that'll help you. And I love what Gloria said in here. She said the first thing that she does when she looks at her hands is she takes her hands and she lifts them up because she gives them to God so that she's able to receive everything that he has for her. You know, then having encouragement hands, guys, that's so important be the person. I, I love what he was said about his friend who played in Europe and then got called up to, to play in the NBA. And he was so excited because he was going to sit the bench for the Spurs. And he said, he's going to be the best flag or the best uh, towel waver on the team. He was going to be the biggest encourager until he got his time to play in the game. And that's exactly what we should be. We should be the biggest encourager for people on our team until we get to step on the court. And that's exactly it. We're on the court every single day, but we need to remember the encouragement piece. Talking about redefining your vocabulary, I love, and you guys, if you don't hear this enough from us, uh, we'll continue to speak it because of the fact that the only way to get through success, like Chad says, if you wanna to get to success, Phil, you gotta ride the struggle bus. Failure is a positive thing. Most of us in our vocabulary, we've been taught that failure is bad. And it's, it's so important that David basically said failure is the only way to learn and get to success. I mean, when, he, when he's so definite that he says failure is a redefinition of the only way to get to success, well, man, that puts it in a bigger light. Also, the, the thought process of what does rich mean to you? Does rich mean wealth or does rich mean something deeper as in relationships, as in time with your family, as in changing lives? You know, taking the things that you've been taught as bad or different and redefining them to help move you forward. Love the word flocus. I guess we're going to use that forever now. It's when the rhythm of flow and focus are at the same pace so that one isn't outpacing the other because when one outpaces the other, most people are in flow without focus or in focus without flow. So if you can bring them together, that helps you go further than one without the other. And most people aren't aware of one or the other because they're so focused that they're missing the flow. And then when they're in flow, they're not paying attention to whether they're focused or not. So 
making sure that you have that awareness of both of them at the same time. They talked about the law of reciprocity, which is absolutely important. You know, there is a power in intention. When you're being intentional about something, the law of reciprocity says that if you go out and do something amazing for somebody else, it will return back to you. And normally it returns in a bigger portion. You should always be preparing for tomorrow's opportunities today. Most people don't realize the number of opportunities that they've missed out on because their brain and their mind and their thoughts and their eyes were not prepared to see them when they already passed them. Embrace the moment that you're in and do the best with what you have now. Because no matter where you are in your life, you can find a way to serve others, which is one of the foundational cornerstones that he talked about. I love, you know, we talk about the why, figure out what your purpose is and, and how you can use it to help others. You know, that's one of the things that we talk about all the time is find your why, find your why, find your why. But the moment that you supercharge that is when you take that why and use it to change the lives of others. And then finally, I'll finish up with the golden 15. Guys, that's super important. Who are the 15 people that you are using to influence you and to push you further? It can be virtual. It can be people in person. But find out the golden 15 that you have. Make a list of the 15 people that you want to learn from, the people that you want to have impact you and change your life. I hope one of those is Ed Milet because one thing that we know about Ed is he will constantly bring new people in just like he did with Dave Nurse, just blew our minds. So guys, go out, make it an awesome day. We can't wait to see you here again next time. We'll see you then.